Yeah. <coughs> and uh, it's now time for questions to the Minister of Enterprise, Trade and Investment. And we'll start with listed questions. And I call Mr Oliver McMullen. Can I ever again question one? Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. Over the past uh, five years, the Causeway Coast and Glens destination has seen significant investment in visitor infrastructure and also in interpretation to the value of £13.4 million. The Causeway Coastal Route is a key focus for Tourism Ireland and Tourism Northern Ireland advertising campaigns in overseas and also in the Republic of Ireland markets, respectively. The Causeway Coast and Glens also features heavily in itineraries that are developed for international media that visit Northern Ireland. And both of our tourism organisations work with the local authorities and tourism partners in the area to promote iconic visitor attractions, including the Giants Causeway and the Carricka Reed uh, Rope Bridge. Uh, as well as the new products, uh, which we're all very excited about, uh, such as the Gobbins Cliff Path and also the hugely successful uh, Game of Thrones filming location. And I'll just note too that Game of Thrones, I think, it is they're now the most successful. And we look at other brilliant productions like Sopranos and different things. We now realise that HBO and, and Game of Thrones have now become the most uh, successful. And then obviously the, the North West and the Giro d'Italia. Thank you. And I call Mr. McMullen for a supplementary. And can I thank the Minister for his answer? And can I take this opportunity of uh, thanking the Minister for his input into the question I, I put into his office two weeks ago on, on tourism in the Glens? And I acknowledge that and help you give. But, Minister, my question is that uh, everything you said there is quite right, but we're missing out on the Mid Glens, which is an integral part of, of the Antrim Coast Road and the experience for tourism. Can I ask you to look into that there to promote it more? Because there will be information coming out in a fortnight's time about HBO, but we need that help, that input from your office there to promote it greatly. We've only got Carnock on the map now. That's the first time ever it's happened. And can I ask you to look into that there? And also, the, 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 uh, the um, scheme they have at the minute for inspecting self-catering uh, accommodation as there are quite a lot of people haven't registered because it isn't. The, 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 the question is, that could you look at that there because it is not doing the trade justice? There's a lot of uh, controversy over it. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. And I do uh, welcome the ongoing uh, communication I've had uh, from the member in this area. I mean, it is a spectacularly beautiful area, uh, an area that you know I've been to many, many times. And I'll, I'll certainly look in to see how we can maximise all of the areas, um, Carnlock, Cushendall, and get all of that uh, brought forward. I do believe a rising tide lifts uh, all boats, and we want to see everything raised uh, as we look towards how we promote both in uh, a whole range of media, but also particularly online and the causeway, uh, coast, and uh, the roadmap uh, for there. Um, I know that uh, there, there has been itineraries posted on the website. I know we have the translations into other languages, which is uh, very important uh, over the next uh, number of weeks. And uh, I'm more than welcome to take the members' suggestions, and that from the industry and the people uh, in the local area. So certainly uh, we'll do that, and I'll work alongside uh, Tourism Ireland. Uh, tourism NI to see how we can promote it. And if the member wants to give me a specific reference to what he said to in terms of self-catering uh, accommodation, I'll certainly look at that and make sure we get that accommodated in with you. Thank you. And I call Mr. Stuart Dixon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Minister, for your questions so far. Minister, would you share with me the concerns that a hotelier in Carlock raised with me yesterday that Mid East Antrim Council have not provided adequate tourist information uh, given the season that is upon us? Um, and would you also acknowledge, Minister, that when opening up the glens and the Causeway Coast uh, to people, that, that effectively starts in Belfast and the Loch Shore Park and includes places like Carrickfergus Castle? There is a major tourism offering in the, in, the, in the area to be made, but there is serious concern about the lack of promotional material available in, in this particular area. 
I mean, I'm more than happy uh, to take up the concerns Mr. Dixon has. I mean, I did say to the NILGA conference, you know, people talk about 11 you know, powerhouses. Uh, I did want to see uh, a northern powerhouse in England. I did say I wanted to see at that stage 11 economic powerhouses. And equally, I want to see 11 tourism uh, powerhouses across. And we will work with each area because each area, as a member rightly points out, uh, has a very distinctive offering. Um, and uh, recently, I, I should have stopped actually at uh, Jordanstown, given my level of fitness, but I actually cycled out you know, past Carrick Fergus, past Eden, right down through uh, uh, to Lauren. And I have to say, just anecdotally, it was beautiful, outstandingly beautiful. Now, the member rightly poses a challenge and one that I'm more than happy to take on. How can we make sure that history from uh, Carrick Fergus Castle right the way through to the offering that the villages have in that particular area? Because I know any time I've uh, stopped in uh, Cushendall, Carnlock, the value of tourism is in the quality of the people and the offering and the support that people give to visitors. And I know in that area it's absolutely second to none. So the question comes, how do we do it? Well, we'll do it online. Uh, we'll do it with our uh, brochures material. And if people are feeling that there's a specific offering they have is not being taken up, give it to us, we'll share it with the councils, we'll look at what Tourism NI can do, it. we'll look at what Tourism Ireland can do with it, and we'll try to make sure, because at the end of the day, uh, we have a huge industry uh, in tourism, which is growing. And we have people from all over the globe, and I, I can quote uh, you know, figures you know, into the millions of more people coming uh, if I look at the, you know, the previous year, something like 11% uh, positive change and something like 4.5 million visitors. How can we make sure that they go back and advertise us to others? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> the Minister has mentioned the Causeway coastal route, uh, which encompasses uh, both the natural beauty of the North Glen and soon to open uh, uh, Gom's Cliff Path. But would the minister agree with me that it's important that we capture not just the day tripper, but we uh, get overnight stays so that local uh, hotels, bed and breakfasts and restaurants uh, gain from, from such stay with additional resources? And how is he ensuring that other departments such as DECAL and the Department of the Environment, which are responsible for a number of for properties such as Carrick Fergus Castle, maximise their input to the tourist industry so that we enhance the product and encourage those overnight stays? Well, I'm more than happy to work, uh, as the member suggests, with uh, the other uh, departments and to work with uh, their particular committees. Uh, we do have to, I mean, ideally, when we get people, we, we've had a wonderful offering uh, in the past uh, because of difficulties with our history. People tended to come in, tended to visit the Giants Causeway, tended to leave. Uh, now, when I look at uh, what, what is particularly happening with the people uh, and some of the research which has shown that people visit the Giants Causeway, stay overnight, visit Titanic, Belfast, uh, what we are seeing is uh, a tourism offering that is going to put uh, an increased need for overnight accommodation. Now, our department, Invest NI, is more than happy uh, to work alongside hoteliers. Uh, we've been doing that um, to see uh, where that additional lead can be best uh, accommodated because we want to make sure uh, that in all the events that we've done, we have done them marvelously well. Uh, and even as we look to the incoming week with the, the tall ships, we look to the 2017 uh, Women's World Cup. I spent quite a bit of time with Dick Spring, the former Tonister, in relation to bringing together the, uh, the World Cup uh, to Ireland uh, as part of a bid. And we know we've got the Irish Open again in 2017. We hope to have the Open. What we also need to make sure, and I, I will take the members' concerns on board, that every department uh, steps up to the plate to make sure we have the capacity that when people come in, to give them the offering that we're capable of. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, can, uh, can the Minister assure uh, me that he's doing everything he can to make sure that there is a coordinated strand to the three councils involved in the Causeway Coast and Glens, the Middy Stunt Room, Causeway Coast and Glens, and even Londonderry City and Straban Council, and connect that also to Republic of Ireland and the Wild Atlantic Way? And can the Minister also assure us that he believes that Tourism Ireland is giving 
the Causeway Coast and Glens area a fair shot and crack when it comes to other competing pressures on the island of Ireland? I thank the member uh, for his, his question. And he, you know, the member for North Andrum is absolutely right. We want to build uh, upon the success of the Causeway Coastal Route, the Mourns Coastal Route. So Tourism NI, in conjunction with all of the coastal councils, uh, has been appointed the consultants to put in place the, the Coastal Route uh, Master Plan. And that plan is going to set out further strategic, uh, tactical, and indeed clustering opportunities right along the coast and to scope out the further links with the Wild Atlantic Way to make sure that there is a coordinated uh, fashion for that. In terms of Tourism Ireland, uh, they uh, live in the Now campaign with the Daily Telegraph kicked off in February. And that will reach more than 8.3 million readers right throughout uh, 2015. The Causeway Coastal Route features as part of that campaign, which also includes uh, half-page advertorials, advertisement on the Telegraph website, articles in the Telegraph travel, and the midweek sections uh, of the newspaper. And Tourism Ireland's first half promotional activity included uh, TV advertising campaigns for Northern Ireland in the United States, in Germany and France, uh, and specifically in those campaigns, the Causeway route was uh, specifically uh, highlighted. And uh, in March, uh, just the pressures of time, I could, I could talk longer than this, Mr. Speaker, but Tourism Ireland teamed up with one of the main online French travel agents, uh, Go Voyages, for its largest ever joint promotional campaign in France. And more than 1,000 uh, billboard ads were spread out right across uh, metro stations in the French capital. It grabbed the attention of commuters with those specific beautiful images of the Causeway coastal route and featured uh, attractive offers uh, to take a weekend break. So I thank them. I spent some time uh, with Tourism uh, Ireland uh, last week. I have to remind the Minister that they are uh, uh, very keen to see it progressed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm sure I won't have to remind you again. <laughs> Content to relax the rule if members wish to uh, divest themselves of their jackets. And uh, just to move on uh, to Ms. Maeve McLaughlin. Uh, John Corler, uh, question number two, please. I thank the member for uh, the, the question. Uh, during the 2014-15 financial year, Invest Northern Ireland helped create over 660 new jobs in the FOIL constituency area. During the year, uh, 491 new jobs were promoted, uh, contributing towards uh, 52.8 million pounds of investment in FOIL, including the recent support for Converges to promote 333 new jobs in the constituency. Corner, and I thank the Minister for that, and, and obviously every job is, is most welcome in the constituency. But can I ask the Minister specifically? Um, if he will indicate, given the regional disparities that do exist in the North West, that he will, along with INI, deliver a sub-regional strategy or proposition for the area. I can understand uh, the member's uh, desire for that. I mean, we, we will certainly do what we can uh, in terms of what we can offer. Um, I think it is also important to note that we provide the support, and it's, it's actually businesses decide. Uh, where they want to go. Now, the new uh, 100 jobs uh, by Metaverse, I mean, they looked around, they took the support of Invest Northern Ireland, and they looked at a number of areas. And for those Metaverse mod squad, now, probably, Mr. Speaker, for you and my generation, the mod squad probably is the jam and the underground, but this is uh, moderated communication that is providing 100 new jobs, a U.S. company, right in the heart uh, of the foil in the, in the city centre. Uh, you know, and the reason they went there, as opposed to other areas like Dublin and Galway that were looking for them, was for the work that Invest Northern Ireland did here, but also, more importantly, in my view, the global reach of Invest NI and the office in the United States that attracted those high digital technology jobs right into the center. And I have no doubt that given the trajectory of the growing need in digital technology, 
that will lead to more jobs in that particular area. I'll certainly look to see what we can do because I think, to be fair, there's probably 18 constituencies all want me to have uh, an individual sort of sub uh, national plan for their particular area. And I think we also, Mr. Speaker, should be aware that if, if I can remember the census figures uh, correctly, some like 40% of our people in Northern Ireland are working in another constituency that they don't live in. So just because jobs are not coming directly to any member specific constituency doesn't necessarily mean that people in that constituency <coughs> aren't getting the jobs because the evidence is indicating otherwise. And it comes to Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Speaker. I want to follow on from my colleague in Foyle and, and depress the Minister uh, and acknowledge in that, one, we have the highest level of unemployed in the North West, Derry and Stoban, highest level of economic inactivity. And given that the First and Deputy First Ministers have acknowledged the importance of ensuring that there is regional balance when it comes to economic opportunities and access to employment, when can the Minister outline to us when the priorities will be of the, the ministerial subgroup looking at these regional imbalances? Well, I, I mean, I, I can you know, get the member the exact details uh, that, that he requests, but I think when we're also looking to an area, it's important that, I mean, when I was down there and I was with a major company that had invested uh, right in the heart uh, of the city centre in the Foyle constituency and invested there against stiff competition from Dublin and Galway. I also think we should look towards what the positives uh, of that particular uh, area are. Um, you know, invest in Northern Ireland, if I look over the four previous years, is what I, what I look towards. Uh, they give out over 1,469 uh, offers of support, uh, which totals something like £31.76 million pounds, uh, of assistance. They contributed uh, 1564 million Four, nine million pounds in terms of investment. Um, there was 35 offers of research and development support, which totaled 11.88 million pounds of assistance, which contributed towards 44.30 million pounds uh, of investment. Uh, there was 48 offers for skills development in the area, which totaled 1.72 million pounds of assistance, which contributed something like just short of six million, I think it was 5.96 million pounds of investment. And if we include the regional uh, start initiatives, there was 2,646 new jobs promoted and somewhere in the region of 122 jobs that were, were actually um, safeguarded. Um, so in terms of what, what has been done, uh, that's what we're, we're doing. And I'll certainly look towards how we can build upon what is a reasonably healthy set of figures to improve for the area. Thank you. And I call Ms. Claire Sugden. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I commend the recent uh, comments by my East London Dairy colleague, uh, Mr. McQuillan, to, ra to raise the concerns about the lack of investment in East London Dairy. Um, does the Minister um, also share these concerns, and what will he do to encourage Invest and I to uh, work a little bit harder in our area? I Again, say to the members too, you know, let's just be conscious too of the fact that 40% of the people, as I understand it, are living outside an area. There, there comes this view that almost gets into the psyche that if the investment goes to another parliamentary constituency area, those jobs are not available to the neighbour. We're a small place in Northern Ireland. Uh, invest Northern Ireland. We're set a task to, uh, to create, uh, promote uh, 25,000 new jobs. Because we have an extra year put on to our term in the Assembly, we can review where they are four years later. And they created 37,000. Now, when I look at, additionally to what I said to uh, Mr. Ramsey, when I look at 1,123 uh, locally owned business start uh, initiatives uh, that were offered support, 58 direct, over 1,065 indirect in terms of the regional start initiative of which 510 new jobs were promoted. Um, and, uh, you know, what we are doing, not only in terms of new business startups, but support to externally owned businesses in that particular area, there was 40 offers of support, 15.63 million pounds of assistance that contributed towards 98.19 million pounds of investment, uh, of which of those 1,181 jobs uh, where new jobs were promoted. I'll certainly encourage Invest Northern Ireland, who are already 
in everything aside from exports in terms of the job loans fund, in terms of research and development, and in terms of being asked to go for 25,000 jobs and delivering us something like 37,222 over the last four-year period. I'll certainly commend them for the excellent work they have done. I'll raise each member's uh, area that would like to see increased in their particular area. Can I call Mr. Adrian McCullen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for his answer there? But, uh, and I do recognise what the best NA has done for Northern Ireland over the last four years and continues to do so. But would the Minister accept an invitation from me maybe to accompany me down to Corain and the Cosby Coast and Glens area and maybe visit some of the businesses? And, and the recent poll on the Belfast Telegraph, the figures showed that the uh, Cosby Coast and Glens was the lowest area for investment uh, for within Invest NA. Certainly, I'm happy to uh, uh, take up that offer. Indeed, I think that the Member of Parliament uh, has already requested in uh, with the Department of Enterprise, Trade and Investment for uh, a visit to the area, and I'm, I'm more than happy to accompany Mr. Campbell, Mr. McQuill, and anybody else from uh, the area uh, that wants Mr. Dallin, Mr. Clare, Mr. McQuillan, everybody. Look, but can I also say something too? It's important for all of us in this particular area to understand it's businesses that make the investments and create jobs. It's not Invest Northern Ireland. I'll say that again. It's businesses that create uh, the jobs uh, and make the investment, not Invest Northern Ireland. So the support that we offer to businesses is demand-led. And that means that we're looking and we are dependent. And I would consider, uh, ask the members of those constituencies to specifically speak to businesses in their particular area, because we're looking at businesses to approach Invest Northern Ireland with a business plan. And if we look at the success, the huge success that Invest Northern Ireland has had over this period, is when businesses do that, they can produce spectacular rewards, not only for them, but also for the targets that we have set for them. And uh, there's actually, uh, there's a high degree of interest in this particular topic, but it is a constituency-focused question, and uh, I'm afraid we must move on. And uh, I call Mr. Barry Michael Duff, and I recognise the uh, in, a, in the gallery a very special group, the uh, the, the Rainbow Group. So, uh, Barry. Gorama, I got a young Corlia. Cash number three. Question number three. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. In February 2014, my department awarded a contract uh, to BT for delivery of the £23.6 million Northern Ireland Broadband Improvement Project, which will bring more choice and improve broadband speeds to over 45,000 premises across Northern Ireland, including uh, rural areas of West Tyrone, by the 31st of December 2015. Uh, now, recognising that NIBIP will not deliver super fast broadband to all premises, on the 27th of February, uh, my department also contacted BT to, contracted BT to deliver the super fast rollout program, which will deliver super fast broadband services to a further 38. Thousand premises across Northern Ireland, including many of the rural areas of West Tyrone, by the 31st of December 2017. Now, this £17.1 million project uh, has commenced with an extensive survey and design process. It will take several months to complete, uh, and until uh, that has been done and completed, it will not be possible. Uh, to be specific about exactly which premises will benefit uh, from the upgrades. Um, further details will be published uh, on Northern Ireland Direct as they become available. And Mr Michael Duff for a supplementary. Uh, thank the Minister for the detail in his answer. But can I say to the Minister that very many rural communities in West Tyrone are being left at the mercy of private satellite companies, private satellite providers with a much poorer product and a much poorer customer service. As opposed to cut to the chase, can I ask the Minister for a commitment here and now to meet with myself and a group of representative people from the West Tyrone constituency aimed at getting to grip with our rural broadband and rural mobile phone coverage problems once and for all? 
Yes, I'm certainly more than happy uh, to meet with the member. Uh, as he knows, I used to work in the particular area. I have a, I have a deep love uh, for that. Uh, and I am more than happy to meet members uh, as the diary allows when I, whenever I possibly can to hear firsthand uh, what we can do. You know, we do look towards alternative provision where we can in terms of satellite broadband services, um, and they can offer products with download speeds of 20 megabits per second. And we, we also look towards uh, wireless broadband, which we supported under the Broadband Fund. And I know that that led right across Northern Ireland to extensive deployment of high-speed fixed wireless broadband networks and services with downloads of up to 100 megabytes per second are available across many parts uh, of West Tyrone. And as, as a member will know, uh, services dependent on the line of sight from the infrastructure uh, to the premises. And I'm certainly uh, happy to meet with a delegation to tell them what we have done, uh, what we intend to do, let them know where we are, particularly uh, with our survey, and then the areas that of particular difficulty that we need to look at again. I call Mr. Joe Byrne. A commitment to increasing the level of broadband across Northern Ireland. In relation to West Rhone, however, people are getting a bit fed up with more surveys. They would feel that BT has got all the data and all the information, and can I urge the Minister that pressure be applied on BT and indeed the mobile companies to provide the necessary broadband service and indeed the mobile service, because we have many small businesses that are badly handicapped at the moment. They are willing to invest, but they are greatly handicapped in how they conduct their business. It raises important points, and I think some of the reasons we have done what we have done uh, is to do exactly uh, what the member has been uh, asking us to do. Um, and it is important to realise just what exactly DETI uh, can do. Uh, we do have the powers under the Communications Act of 2003 uh, to make investments which are important to Northern Ireland. So we can uh, improve the, the extent, uh, we can uh, look towards improving the quality, we can look towards uh, improving the reliability of telecoms, both networks and services, uh, where the market uh, has determined it's not financially viable uh, to do so. Uh, what we cannot do is specify a particular technology solution. Uh, to do so brings us in breach of the European Commission uh, state aid uh, regulations. We cannot compel network operators to invest in particular areas uh, or deliver services at particular uh, prices, and we can't uh, interfere in disputes between uh, service providers uh, and their customers. But in terms of, uh, I'm happy to further on in, in, in that particular meeting, uh, if the member uh, chooses to join it, to see what we can do about extent, uh, quality and uh, reliability uh, of the services where the market hasn't, or where there's a lacuna in the service. Mr. Gordon Dunn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the Minister for his answers. Does the Minister recognise the need for a robust strategy to cover all rural areas? Uh, as more and more people are working from home, and many are involved in their own small businesses, and whether it be in the beautiful West Tyrone or scenic North Down and Arge. Yes. <laughs> I was just enjoying that uh, bit of a run through there, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Sadly, it came to quite an abrupt end. But the, uh, there is information on our DETI projects and uh, information on the specific rollout plans uh, for the Northern Ireland Broadband Improvement Project. It's currently available on the Northern Ireland Direct website. Uh, it includes a postcode checker, which enables constituents to identify when work is due to be completed uh, in their area. Information will be posted to the Northern Ireland Direct website on the Superfast Rollout Programme as it becomes available. But in the meantime, a fact sheet and frequently asked questions are available on our DETI website. Uh, a fact sheet specific to the Northern Ireland Broadband Improvement Project uh, has already, I understand, been distributed to all MLAs. Again, it's available on the website, and as is the facts sheet and the facts on Superfast uh, Rollout uh, Programme. That ends the period for listed questions. We will now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions, and I call Ms. Maeve McGluck.
Carmel, um, and can I ask the Minister, just given the current economic climate, in particular the decline along the border regions, um, could the Minister maybe commit to learning more about the proposed introduction of a border development zone, as has been proposed by a number of leading economists? Carmel. I'm happy to look at any proposals uh, from any part of Northern Ireland uh, that uh, come to, towards me um, and to see what we can do to both promote jobs, to, uh, to create jobs and indeed very often to sustain jobs in particular areas. Uh, so I was up in the North West with the new 100 uh, jobs announcement and we will continue to look uh, to see what support we can give and what support business is asking us. Uh, and I think that's an, it's a two-way process. It's not only just what support we can give, it's also what support businesses are coming to invest in Northern Ireland with their business plan, specifying what specific help they need, and then we can work alongside them. And I think uh, if the member wants to encourage people in that particular area to come to us, come to us with the business plan, and to see how worthwhile that is, look towards what has been achieved uh, over the last uh, four years, where there has been some uh, quite spectacular progress. And I know members in this House, you know, for up until August of last year, we proudly boasted that we have more foreign direct investment than any other part per capita of the United Kingdom, than any other part outside of London. But in August of last year, those figures were surpassed. We looked to the previous year, we looked at our 1.82 million, million population, and we can proudly boast now that Northern Ireland today, per head of its population, has more foreign direct investment than any other part of the United Kingdom. And anything to either improve upon investment, to work with specific areas, uh, they will receive an open door in Derry if it's about creating and promoting jobs. Thank you. And I call Ms McLaughlin for a sub. And I thank the Minister for that very um, pragmatic, I think, approach. Uh, and I do agree with the Minister that uh, there is a responsibility on regions in terms of developing their unique selling point where there are structural and infrastructural deficits that need to be addressed as well. But can I ask specifically then in relation to the, uh, the border development zones and, and the Minister saying he's willing to explore that, you know, is he accepting now that, that cooperation, and indeed I think a number of ministers have done this, can be done in a way that threatens no one but is for the benefit for all in the region? Well, we have been uh, extensively working with a number uh, of bodies, and I'll work with anybody if it is about uh, improving jobs uh, and sustaining jobs uh, in Northern Ireland. And there are a number of our companies that, that do business uh, on, on both uh, parts of Northern Ireland and the Republic, and I'll work with them to create jobs uh, in Northern Ireland uh, as much as I possibly can. I mean, when I, when I look at specific areas uh, and look at uh, over uh, particular areas, uh, I mean, there, there is, in terms of offers of assistance, quite significant offers coming from uh, Invest uh, Northern Ireland. Uh, over a period there, we had 2,339 uh, offers out. In terms, we put in over 100 uh, million pounds of assistance that was offered. Uh, there was a planned investment uh, of 430 0.90 million pounds. So uh, that was an assistance per head of something like 1,151 pounds and an investment per head of over 5,000 pounds. So I think in specific areas we can show where work is going, uh, where it's progressing, and if anybody comes to me with proposals uh, to work together that will create more jobs in Northern Ireland, you'll have an open door. Thank you. And I call Mr Dominic Bradley. Uh, um, could I ask the Minister what his department is doing to attract more jobs to Newry City and area? Well, the, I mean, the, the, the jobs that, that we specifically do uh, in terms of attract, what we do is we highlight in many cases the skills offering that we have, the research and development offering uh, that we have, the assistance that Invest Northern Ireland uh, can give. In terms of Newry and Armagh area, uh, over the period that, that I am reviewing, there were something like 2,275 uh, offers that were made, uh, which translated into over £53 million uh, of assistance, uh, which looked at um, £430 million in excess of that of planned investment, 
uh, assistance per head of somewhere in the region of £596, and investment per head of just short of £5,000, I think it was £4,813. Uh, so let's go out and tell people uh, the jobs that we have. In the last period, as, as I was joking, Mr. Speaker, I got the announced in five weeks nearly 500 uh, new jobs for Northern Ireland. I summarised it in two words. Thank you, Arlene. But uh, there is a real interest in investing in Northern Ireland. And when I take just a couple of the companies, the Metaverse Mod Squad, uh, the RLC, Grant Thornton, what I hear from them is that they have invested in Northern Ireland after, in some cases, doing a global span, in many cases against stiff competition right across this island, and they've come here because of the skills offering uh, of our young people and because of the education that we can provide. Bradley for supplement. I agree with the Minister that Newry is a first class location for uh, industry and commerce located as it is on the north south economic corridor. We have fantastic uh, schools in Newry and all the skills that are required. And I was just wondering. Um, the uh, extension to the industrial site at Carn Brain, uh, does the Minister see uh, that particular uh, facility having a role in attracting more inward investment? I mean, I, I'm more than happy to sit down with the member um, and look at that particular industrial uh, area. I don't think I can keep in my head every single uh, industrial uh, place that a member specifically has. What I can do and what, we, what we've seen do, because I've been very, very impressed uh, with what Newry has actually done. Um, I, I sat down there with a, a previous Shadow Chancellor uh, at the Chamber of Commerce in the last number of years, and uh, at a specific lunch we reviewed uh, what had been done. Uh, what I do really like about the attitude of many of the business community uh, in Yuri, it's pretty much what we can do, uh, and how can you help us to do what we have? And in that sense, the more business plans that are specifically brought forward, it's not for me necessarily to stipulate I want this industrial zone or that particular area extended. What I'm saying to the businesses in that particular area, come to me with your business plan, come to me with uh, where you see development opportunities, and come to me with what help you need from Invest NI to, to deliver on your business plan. And if you do that, uh, certainly the evidence over the last number of years right across Northern Ireland, and not exclusively in Europe, but right across Northern Ireland, has been that we can create more jobs and we can promote more jobs. Pat Rams. Yeah. Could I ask the Minister, is he aware of the major economic benefits that city deals have brought to Aberdeen, Manchester, Liverpool and Glasgow? I'm delighted to say yes, uh, and, uh, largely on the basis uh, about a number of months ago the uh, Member of Parliament for FOIL had contacted me specifically uh, in relation to uh, city deals and we are looking to see there is a further meeting planned uh, in relation to that because it's an ongoing uh, piece of work and as, as last week I was in Londonderry with uh, Mr Durkin's parliamentary assistant specifically on the issue of city deals because it does Offer, the area offers looks, is an ideal offering uh, for city breaks, and we will look to do that with Tourism NI to see how we can develop that tourism offering, particularly around city breaks. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey, for supplement. Yeah, and I thank the Minister for a very warm response to the question. Uh, to, to advance it a wee bit further, I think it is important that it's not just on tourism, there is an economic value and infrastructural and social benefit as well. Could the Minister maybe outline? the possibility of visiting some of these areas, Aberdeen, Liverpool, Manchester, Glasgow, to see on the ground the effect that it's having and the love that it's given to local communities there? It's a, certainly a very interesting itinerary the member uh, offers for me. What I can assure him is that we will take the best practice from those areas. Um, and uh, There has been extensive work uh, that's been undertaken in relation to it. I know the research uh, that the MP brought to me and that in a meeting with his assistant uh, in Londonderry last week we were able to build upon. There will be a further meeting. What I can assure him uh, is 
I uh, can't assure him diary pressures will visit everyone personally, even though I might like to, but what I can assure him is that we will use the best practice of that and try and translate that best practice into the area, because when we look at how we want to grow uh, tourism, you're absolutely right. The economic benefits that flow, uh, both socially and then economically, are much wider than just tourism per se, but can, uh, in many cases you know, for, you know, that we've already seen, uh, bring young people particularly uh, into employment. And the reality is, particularly for the member city, but also right across Northern Ireland, when people come to visit us, they want to come back. Part of our job is to make sure they come uh, for a short period, stay overnight, see that we've got the, what we've got to offer, and then put that out as an advertisement to others. And I call Mr. Ali Geeston. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Could I ask the Minister for an update on the recent uh, jobs announcements by uh, Denroy Plastics in North Down in Bangor? Can I thank the member? I know uh, the interest that he has uh, in creating jobs in his uh, particular area. It's a very healthy interest, and I welcome that uh, from the member. He will have seen that I announced uh, 32 uh, new jobs at Denroy Plastics, and they undertake the design, the engineering, the contract manufacture of injection molded plastic products and components for a broad range of uh, customers, uh, including the aerospace industry, defence, materials handling, construction, medical, automation, right through uh, to the consumer sectors. Uh, that particular project is a staged expansion of the production capacity at Denroy's factory. And that will allow them to purchase new equipment both to support the industry's growth within the global aerospace industry. Now, when I know that we need tens of thousands of new planes uh, in Northern Ireland, um, you, you just, not for Northern Ireland, but across the globe, the Northern Ireland industry, uh, and Denroy specifically, are offering some products, one particular uh, plastic polymer uh, that is absolutely uh, unique. And Denroy, I think, is going to continue to be uh, an important supplier to the global aerospace sector. And uh, in order for the company to grow in Northern Ireland, uh, that investment in both buildings uh, and production uh, is required. It will create 32 new manufacturing jobs at the Bangor factory. We have already got eight of those jobs uh, in place. And I think, too, that is important because people say, oh, what is the average salary? Well, the average salary of those particular jobs are somewhere in the region of 18,000. £687, which I think is very attractive indeed. And I call Mr. Easton for a supplement. Thank you. Um, could I thank the Minister for his update? And would the Minister agree with me that Denroy's are a, a world leader in their field? And could he maybe tell us how much investment in, went in from Invest Northern Ireland and the company themselves and what benefits that will have to uh, the population of North Down? I'm more than happy to identify with uh, Mr. Easton's comments, with both Denroy uh, being uh, a, a local economic leader, but also a national uh, and international in terms of the product it can specifically offer. In that particular case, Invest Northern Ireland offered total assistance of £400,000, which leveraged a £3 million investment by Denroy. Uh, we are providing an Invest NI capital grants towards the eligible costs of the buildings, but also state of the art, and I mean this, absolutely state of the art manufacturing equipment. Because this is a sector, uh, as Mr. Easton rightly points out, Mr. Speaker, that is at the leading, age, leading edge of aerospace development. And that will provide new skills and new capabilities for a whole range of people. Uh, in Northern Ireland. Uh, the project is an outworking of what many members of the House will know to be the Northern Ireland Aerospace Strategy of Partnering for Growth, which was launched in January 2014, where Northern Ireland companies committed to doubling the size of the aerospace sector to £2 billion of sales and to increase employment from 8,000 to 12,000 staff over the next 10 years. Uh, I expect that project to be fully completed and the 32 new jobs to be in place by 2017. Uh, and that's building upon what Denroy already does, employing some 127 people and a commitment to employing 151 staff 
in Northern Ireland by 2017. I call Ms. Michaela Boyle, and there may not be time for a supplementary, so you might want to choose which question. Uh, uh, Minister, since the opening of the, the Strabane Business Park, um, Invest NI has met with a number of um, uh, potential uh, interested businesses who are looking to locate to the area uh, within the estate. Unfortunately, um, as of yet, none of these interactions have become actual sales. And given the high level of need of jobs in this area, um, Minister, can you give it a view and opinion as to why those potential investors are not interested in locating in the business park? And also, Minister, I would like to welcome you to Strabane to see the business park, Gormogat. Yes, thanks, Phil. That was, uh, uh, the member's smile led me to get that question short, because I know the interest that she has uh, in the particular area, and I'm more than happy to take out that offer uh, to, to visit uh, particularly. And I think it's important too how we frame, because I think Straban has a huge amount to offer um, in terms of the development of the Straban Business Park. Uh, it has released, what, 16 new acres uh, of new industrial land, which will not only support economic development within Straban, but also right, right across the wider West Tyrone area. So Invest Northern Ireland has engaged uh, with the Council. It has engaged with the stakeholders regarding the development of the business park. And I think we, if we frame it in terms of the significant investment, first of all, by Invest Northern Ireland, I think what it does show is that there is an ongoing commitment to securing investment and to get employment opportunities uh, for the West Tyrone area. Um, I think it is the view of Invest Northern Ireland that the current availability of land within Straban Business Park is going to be sufficient to meet the needs uh, of the qualifying businesses across uh, the medium term. And I want to assure the member that Invest Northern Ireland will continue to proactively market the land to potential investors, both indigenous and foreign direct. Um, and again, we do need to remember that the final decision on investment location rests solely uh, with the uh, investor. So I'll, I'll certainly take up the, the offer uh, to visit when I can, and we'll put whatever resources that we can to, to bring together and see the fulfilment of the potential that the Straban Business Park has to offer, Mr. Speaker. Much, Minister, and time is up. Uh